uh, this is a sensitive subject. Uh, the powers that be, I, it mainly seems like with Bigfoot, you can talk about Bigfoot, you can research Bigfoot, you can go out and try to get trail camera pictures and cast footprints and have your little conferences and have a cup of coffee and talk about it. But it seems like where people really get in trouble with this subject is when they have really good video, really good foolproof DNA, really good hard evidence that these things exist. Not just, you know, tails and I saw something run across the road and one time in a field there's eight foot tall creature walk by. There's a lot going on with this. And uh, the famous Patterson-Gimlin film, the best thing we have so far, evidence that's been released to the public anyway, like you see in the background, 1967, kind of before this was really a big thing and before a lot of people even knew about it. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of the reasons why there's a government cover-up and some of the reasons why they want to keep this a secret and not necessarily have it be a recognized species like a bear or a condor or a mountain lion or anything else. Uh, and there's some really simple answers and there's also some long answers and we're going to get into it tonight. So one thing that gets thrown around a lot is, oh, it would affect the logging industry. And this is true if Bigfoot was a recognized species endangered, we didn't know what they were and researchers were out there and habitat protections. I mean, if you've seen what they do for like frogs and little fish and things like that, um, you imagine what they would do for an upright walking, uh, creature like a Bigfoot. Um, so a lot of people say like the logging industry and some of the timber industries and things like that would be really hurt and growing industries and also um, like mining because those are op often operate back in the hills and the mountains where you have mountains you have exposure to minerals and where you have mountains you also have lots of trees and habitat for wildlife. So not that there aren't mines in the desert, not that there aren't Bigfoots in the desert. I think uh, these are just two reasons that I, he I hear get thrown around a lot is very mundane reasons is the mining industry and uh, the logging industry and other things that take place outside. Uh, different things like in public lands for raising cattle and letting them graze and wander. A lot of that would stop, I'm sure. And the other thing I also hear a lot is the tourist industry. There's millions of people visit our national parks and national forest every year and our national monuments and BLM and public lands and state parks. And this is also another reason why they say they don't want this truth to get out. And there's a lot more to that. We'll get to that in a minute. And uh, when you start looking into the Bigfoot mystery, you start to realize, like we've talked about on this channel, that there seems to be different varieties or different looks to them or different regional styles, if you will. If they're subspecies or offshoots of the same species or if they just look different, um, you know, there's still a lot to be determined. But we know people are reporting different looking ones with radically different behaviors. Um, some are very aggressive and appear to be completely carnivorous and you don't want to mess with them like the equivalent of like a polar bear or like a tiger, an alpha predator, something you don't want to mess with. And other things uh, are a little, less, a little less harmless. And I think it's some more of these aggressive types that are really the problem for the government. I also think some of your standard looking more patty types like the type ones we've discussed on this channel and type twos, the wood boogers, the type ones and type twos being like 80% of what people see. They can be aggressive. The Native American cultures talk to them about them a lot, but there's more of these Wendigo species and the Gugwe type species that can be very aggressive. And uh, then you get into more like the wood booger types like we're talking about, maybe not necessarily looking as humans as food, but um, easily excitable, much like chimpanzees and other apes and very territorial, um, can cause a lot of havoc, can chase people out. Just be aggressive to be aggressive, maybe not necessarily towards food. And then when you get into Bigfoot, you start wandering into other things like dog men that people are seeing and other strange creatures across the U.S. And I think one of the reasons for covering it up is once you let the Bigfoot out of the bag, so to speak, a lot of other creatures start to come to life. And it's kind of the tip of the iceberg. But I think the main reason why the government's covering it up has to do a lot with missing 411. Not that if you've studied the missing 411 mysteries, I don't think it's Bigfoot killing everybody. I don't think it's them. But I do think a certain number of them who go missing um, in a certain number of places, I think Bigfoot could be a culprit. We've discussed this on this channel before. And uh, they might be part of the mystery. Now, there's really out there stuff that Bigfoot's 
extra dimensional or they can do a lot of other stuff and i don't necessarily know about that but i think when you open a door for bigfoot you open a door for a lot of other things that are out in the woods and a lot of other things that happen to people and uh, i think that's one of the main reasons why there's a government cover-up because i think certain varieties certain times of year like we've talked about do take people and they do take them for a food source and our federal government knows that uh if they disclose that these creatures are out there and are everywhere and are being seen it would be massive chaos and i think it would really would hurt not just tourists and farming and uh mining and logging operations but i think our whole paradigm of what exists and what's out there i think if you look at our national park system and you look at the missing 411 cases uh, most of the missing 411 cases happen in national parks and then you look at uh spots across the united states where you have a lot of bigfoot sightings and they all seem to kind of go cut they kind of all seem to coincide and like I said, I think there's a large number of missing 411 things that I don't think are Bigfoot. But I think it's uh, very much opening the door to a lot of other unexplained things that our government doesn't want to get into. And if you've been into this mystery long enough, you start to hear stories about problem Bigfoots on the edge of towns or near campgrounds where they have to send in special forces, military, very top secret stuff, some of the best hunters of people in the world to go hunt these things down, especially ones that go rogue or get aggressive around people. And then you also get into where this uh, Bigfoot men in black, so to speak, uh, they don't look like your typical men in black, but they have kind of the same job. They basically show up and say, uh, you saw a bear, don't talk about it, bad things will happen. Your family, your business, your life, everything will be ruined if you don't shut up about this. Um, one's portrayed more as like a biker and one's portrayed more as like a businessman, like good cop, bad cop. And uh, it seems that all over the United States, a different variety of these things is absolutely shocking. Some of them appear to be an overgrown um, chimpanzee. Other ones like the famous Mayaka skunk apes. If you do the scaling on this, it looks like a giant overgrown um, orangutan. And some of these are very almost friendly and curious like like you would expect to see any other kind of uh, ape-like creature, and some are very aggressive. And like any wild animal, you don't know um, what their dispositions can be, how they can be around people. And then you get into a lot of other stuff that uh, maybe there's some genetic engineering for some of these types, but that's getting really deep down the rabbit hole. But if we just step back a minute and look at a lot of the Native American traditions of Bigfoot and mountain giants and wood boogers. A lot of men, a lot of Native American tribes all over the place have a deep history of these things. Um, a lot of them don't have anything good to say or it's neutral of uh, they stay on that side of the canyon, we stay on this side of the canyon or they're on that side of the river. Or we hunt at night or they hunt at night and we hunt during the day. If you stay out at night, the uh, the hairy man will carry you away or carry your women off and make wives of them or carry your children off and eat them. Um, or you have more traditions of them being a little more friendly and trading with them. And you also have traditions uh, of them even teaming up together to defeat other cryptid species and other strange um creatures and things that have been known to exist. So you can't ignore the history, the thousands of years that the Native Americans have been here before us. And they all tell you kind of the same thing, that uh, they're a creature that should be respected, um, but you want to keep your distance and stay away from them. They're not something to go out and be harassed or trifled with. You keep their distance. And uh, I think that's part of the thing the government knows that these things are potentially dangerous, um, just like any other animal, just like any other wild tribe of people would be if you think they're people. Whenever they make contact with some lost Amazon tribe or the uh, Sentinelese, Sent Sentinelese Islands, that's a very interesting story. Whenever these outside groups are met with modern humans, they're typically very aggressive. And uh, Bigfoot in certain situations with young around or hard times a year with food, I think is a lot of the same. And I think this is the core reason that the government doesn't want you to know is that uh, they really, when it comes down to it, is occasionally they take people, they can be dangerous. And I think a lot of people have been taken by these creatures. A lot of the missing people stories out there, I think, are a result of Bigfoot. Now, that's not to say they're all bad. I also think it kind of opens Pandora's box for the government as far as, you know, Dogman and aliens and a lot of other really weird out there stuff that goes beyond Bigfoot. And it really makes sense in a lot of ways for the government to cover this up and not to come out with it on many levels, from a very practical level all the way on up. And uh, I know this is kind of a shorter video. We could talk for hours about this subject. Uh, 
but there's a lot going on here, and I just wanted to give you guys kind of a quick rundown. Maybe there's some points you haven't heard of or maybe some new things. Uh, or For all the new people, this is kind of just a guide to some of the basics of why the government would cover it up. And when you kind of put it in that, as that aspect of if you believe in Bigfoot, you know they exist, maybe you had an encounter, and then you start adding up the native traditions, you start adding up the missing people, you start adding up other strange creatures, and then all the industry and tourist um, industries and everything else, hunting, all the things that, you know, millions and billions of dollars a year that get spent all going through there, and just the sheer liability of people going out in the woods with these things, you start to realize, well, maybe that's why the government wouldn't be so quick to acknowledge these creatures. And that's pretty much my two cents on it. Stay safe in the woods, folks. Thank you very much for watching tonight.